Thresh is an incredibly versatile support. He can do just about anything. He's good at peeling, he's okay at engaging, he's got some really nice zone control, the ability to save people from bad situations, he's got good roams, he's decent in lane, but with all of that in the champion on its own, you've got a lot of stuff that you need to worry about, and in this guide, I'm gonna go over a ton of stuff to help you grasp this champion better. And to find even more guys like this one, on Thresh specifically, other champions, or other important skills for League, make sure you go check out our website, GameLeap.com, where we have guides that are made by challenger level players on just about anything you could ever need. While you're at it, make sure you hit the like and sub buttons, because for each one that you click, you'll be able to land one more hook in your next game. And you know, of course, every time you land a hook, you're able to flex your mastery on Thresh, so it's just a win-win. Thresh is a champion who is easier to explain in phases of the game, so let's start with the early game and talk about what you should be doing. And the first thing that you are doing as Thresh is you're either leashing or looking to fight people in lane at level 1. And this is because your E is extremely powerful and your Q is extremely powerful. So no matter what's going on in your lane, or if you're leashing or not, you're able to have a big impact by CCing people and dealing a lot of damage. There are some ways to more efficiently use his E though, and the first thing you need to be aware of if you aren't already is that his E has a damage ramp up as part of the passive on his next auto attack, and it doesn't start until you learn the ability, which means if you're leashing, you need to learn it a few seconds earlier to get the ramp up to deal more damage for a better leash, or if you aren't, you have to try to do something in lane to hide yourself in a bush or in the alcove and then learn your E so that you can get the damage ramp up while you're hidden and then get a big hit off. The reason why you have to hide is because you can actually tell what ability Thresh starts by clicking on him. In case you didn't know, you could left click on a champion, allied or enemy, and they pop up in the top left with a status window that lets you know what buffs they have, and enemies can see your E buff empowering your next auto attack. Taking a chance and assuming that your opponent doesn't know how to tell what type of strategy you're using is not a risk that you want to take. Make sure that you aren't making that mistake. And while we're on the topic of E, let's cover another mistake that people make way too often on Thresh in lane. You always want to make sure that you aren't auto attacking too much in lane. Thresh's range is a bit low, so he really can only abuse some of the very low range or literally melee range supports. However, the first hit that you have is huge because of the E passive, so you can usually afford to take a little bit of damage as you move in to hit the AD carry or the enemy support with a big burst from your passive. What you don't want to do is overextend and try and keep hitting them. Dancing around the lane and getting those big hits in is super important, but if you auto attack too much, you start taking too much minion aggro and damage, and you can even completely ruin the lane by changing how it's pushing because the minions are attacking you and not your minions. And if you happen to be overextending and you don't have higher levels for your other abilities yet, it can be extremely risky. Remember, you want to give yourself time for the passive to ramp up and then get that one big hit in, maybe you even flay them too. Otherwise, trading auto attacks, unless you just straight up outrange them like a level 1 Alistair, is not worth doing ever. The other really important tip for Thresh's early game is to use the minions, both yours and the enemy teams, to never miss a hook again. Everybody knows that you could just, you know, throw a skill shot out and try to hit somebody. Maybe you call a dodge and you aim a little bit to the left or to the right. Everybody can do that, but what you probably aren't taking into account is using minions to help aim your hooks and time your hooks. When you see your minions getting low, you know the enemy AD carry wants to CS it. That's just like the fundamentals of Lee. You want to get CS. You can use that to time and aim your hook. If they go for the CS and you aim it and time it properly, then you get a fat hook off. And if they decide to dodge, then they must miss the CS. It's a straight up win-win scenario no matter what. The only thing you lose out on is the cooldown and the mana you spend, and they lose out on the gold. It might not seem like it in that moment, but doing that can be very powerful, especially if you do it with cannon minions consistently. But that's only one half of the story, that's just you using your minions and timing to your advantage. You could also do stuff with the enemy minions. If you happen to see your AD carry walking up to go for a CS, or you even have something like Steel Shoulder Guards charges to be able to execute a minion, and you time your hook right when the CS drops, 
it's a really, really sneaky way of getting super sick and strong hooks off. Because of the way you're aiming it and timing it, you're probably going to be able to pull people into the minion wave, or at least close enough that they start taking aggro if they try and retaliate, and it sets up a super amazing trade for you, or maybe even an all-in. If you abuse those tips, you should have a strong early game almost any time that you play Thresh. That's not the whole story though, there's also more tips that aren't just focused around the early game, but can help you there too. There are some really good generic ones that you can do no matter what time in the game it is. First of all, always try to use your lantern to pull somebody out of the fountain. It's a really small optimization, but those add up to make a big difference. Timing is everything in getting to fights on time, getting to the farm before it dies, getting to towers to take plates or defend towers. If there's something that you can speed up the process of, you're going to want to do it. And doing that with your lantern every time is worth it. You're going to regenerate the mana by the time you get back to lane and really start doing anything meaningful, so don't worry about that. Now, if your teammates don't click on the lantern, well, that's a damn shame and I can't really help you with that, but maybe you could type to them or ping them beforehand or right when you do it to help grab their attention. Another really good generic tip is that you should always make sure you're being present with allies around you to proc your support items. Make sure you execute minions and you get your gold for your wards as soon as you possibly can. You need them. They are a super important tool as dragons, rift heralds, and other objectives and the jungle becomes more important. If you happen to roam, don't just leave the lane if you don't get a kill. Make sure you also grab a CS on your way out to make sure that you're maximizing the gold for the wards that will ultimately help your team out a ton. It's okay if you and your mid laner or you and your top laner split experience on one minion as you walk out of the lane. And while we're on that topic, another thing that you should be doing is roaming. This goes for pretty much any support, but especially on Thresh, your roams are incredibly powerful. When would you roam? Well, that's a great question. Did your AD carry just recall for an item and you're alone in lane? Roam. Jungler fighting nearby and the lane is pretty much frozen in the dead center? Roam. Recalled and got Moby Boots? Roam. Thresh is always relevant when he roams, even without being level 6. You have great CC, long range abilities, and pressure even if you don't get a kill. And sometimes you roaming can be what saves people by disengaging with your flay, hooking somebody to CC them, using your lantern to pull somebody out. And even outside of those direct fight scenarios, you can help deny CS, create freezes, ward and deward, and just get control. Because Thresh has so much that he can offer, it's really easy for him to give control to his allies over the map because he can keep them safe, he can engage, and he can do everything in between. The last thing that you should always be keeping in mind when you're playing Thresh is to use your ultimate creatively. You don't just have to hook or flay somebody every single time you have your ultimate off cooldown. That's not what you only do. You can also use your ulti as a great tool to disengage even though it's also good at engaging and dealing damage. Not only that, but it's good at zoning too, because the slows are so powerful, you can cut people off completely. Let me paint you a little picturesque story around a late game Elder Dragon or maybe a late game Baron call. You and your team have been struggling to win this game, and you guys scale well, but so does the enemy, and they got a lot of scary things on their team. You guys managed to get control of the dragons and you got the soul, but it still isn't enough to win. And now Elder Dragon is starting to spawn. It's the best combat buff in the game by far, literally executing people when they're under 20%, which is insane. So what can you do? You can set up wards, you have the ability to hook people out, pull people to safety with lanterns if you need, but that might not be enough. The enemy team might just be grouping and running at you guys because they have a huge front line that can tank anything you can throw at them unless they're slowed down. Guess what? Move away from the Elder Dragon. Throw your ultimate down to block the path of your enemies, especially if you manage to get it at a choke point on one of the ramps that leads straight into the river, you can slow down multiple people by 99% and never allow them to even get close enough to the Elder Dragon before your team manages to finish it off. Understanding that Thresh's ultimate is as important for damage as much as it is for slowing is a big part of being able to maximize your potential.
While Thresh can do it all, one of his greatest strengths is the ability to allow him and his teammates to kite out just about anything, short of like an Olaf who is literally unstoppable, or a Malphite who is also unstoppable. Buying time for those key cooldowns that make you and your teammates super strong is exactly what he excels at, and he's pretty good at just about anything else. There's also a few other things that you should be keeping in mind to keep Thresh as a versatile champion and powerful in almost any lane. You can choose what ability you want to max. You can max your Flay or your Hook. Both are completely fine. In lanes where you're going to be scrapping with people who are very tanky and your Hooks don't really mean much because they don't catch somebody out and kill them, then just max your E. Having more damage on your Flay, which is an AoE spell that can hit both the support and the enemy AD carry, is just better than having your hook. It'll also make your harass stick a little bit harder as most tanky champions don't have a ton of sustain and they don't have a way to give their AD carry healing or damage reduction. So if you can just max your E, walk up to the AD carry, and just chain whip them for 300 damage, that's pretty fantastic. And you can play the long con with those big boy beefy supports and not have to worry about it too much. Now, in the opposite scenario, where you're up against somebody who is extremely squishy and needs to be caught out, like a mage support, maybe like a brand, or in some cases you could say a swain, then you can go for the hook max, try and fish for all those catches, and get them, reel them in, and just destroy them in one round of abilities with your AD carry. But maybe you're up against somebody who's a little bit more flexible, like a Janna, one of those enchanter supports who does decent damage but has buffs, shielding, or healing. Max and Q can be good there too because you get to hook out the squishy champions, but you can also choose to go for your E and be more consistent and focusing on healing for your AD carry rather than going for super hyper aggressive plays that might not work out because of a particular defensive tool the enemy support has available to them. A perfect example of this is Morgana, who can be really crippling to Thresh with her black shield, but you don't have to go all in on trying to engage with hooks, which Morgana can block really easily. Instead, you can go for a few points in Flay or even just max Flay and try and harass her. I went into so much detail about when you would want to max what ability because it's also important to know that you can max any other ability second after you max either Q or E first. In my high elo game, I often max W second because it allows me to have a lower cooldown escape tool for my allies. But sometimes having a bigger burst of damage against somebody like an Olaf who can't be stopped or really ran away from anyways unless you're going over a bunch of walls, you might want to have that extra burst or some extra damage in the flay ability itself. And since we're going so hard into talking about the abilities and what you want to max when and what lanes are really good for what ability max, let's also talk about your starting ability. You could start anything on Thresh. It's actually viable to start your W. It might not be the best thing in that scenario, but if you have to do it to get somebody out from a cheeky invade, then just go for it. It shields both you and the ally in lane, so you could use it to just try and tank up some damage and hard shove the way for level 2, where you become a lot stronger. And the versatility doesn't stop there because you can mix things up even more with your runes and your items. To complete Thresh, you want to make sure that you're taking Aftershock. Aftershock is just so good for Thresh because he has his Q and his E to proc it. So even if you happen to miss your hook, you could still have a failsafe with your E. And I, I mean, if you manage to miss both, then I mean, we both know what went wrong there. I think we can all learn from that. For the next row of the resolve tree, you do have options. You could take Demolish if you're playing with an AD carry who pushes a lot, like maybe a Caitlyn, to try and pressure the enemy tower, walk up a little bit, maybe you find a hook, maybe you manage to shove them off of the tower because they're very low, and you could get free tower platings that way, and nice tower chip damage. It's also pretty good into the later stages of the game. Your other option is to go Font of Life, which does give you a bit more healing on your allies who are hitting targets that you CC. And considering that your E and your R are AoE, it's not a bad idea. And Thresh does get a pretty decent health pool, and if he has a stone plate, can get a pretty large health pool, which will have a decent amount of healing for anybody who's hitting his targets. Moving down a row, you now have a choice between conditioning, second wind, and bone plating. And what I'm going to say right now is that all of these are actually viable. However, Second Wind and Conditioning are way more common, particularly right now. Second Wind is good in any lane where anybody can touch you ever. And considering that most AD carries have a poke ability or a ranged option, aka their auto attack, you're probably going to take some damage. And Second Wind is great for sustaining back up and through that. 
Combine that with having an enemy range support, and Second Wind presents itself as an obvious option. But if you know that you aren't going to be trying to go super aggressive and that you aren't going to take a ton of poke because you have to play really defensive because your AD carry is weak in the early game or something, then you can just go for conditioning and start scaling. It is actually pretty good for Thresh as he has natural armor scaling in his passive and also gets tanky items. The only time you want to get bone plating is when you're in one of two scenarios. You are trying to all in the enemy and that's all you have hope for or your enemy is trying to all in you and you just need to make sure that no matter what, you survive those all-ins. Again though, it's really, really easy for an AD carry to knock off your bone plating before they go for a trade if they're actually smart, so it's probably not even a good option, and you're better off just going second win then anyways, if you can count on your opponents having more than one brain cell. For the last row and resolve, you need to choose between Overgrowth and Revitalize. Unflinching really isn't that great, as it's not super important for you to have tenacity and slow resist, but it can come in handy against really annoying teams with slows, like maybe an Ash. Outside of a select scenario like that one, you could choose Overgrowth if you're just simply looking to scale, or Revitalize for early game effectiveness and late game scaling with items like Locket or Redemption. It can also help your survivability as it will affect things like Summoner Heal, which is very nice. Speaking of Summoner spells, depending on what your AD carry is, you're going to want to take either Flash Ignite or Flash Exhaust. You could play really defensively with Exhaust and have a really, really solid healing lineup, or you could take Ignite and start playing aggressively in the lane. It also helps in the later stages of the game because you can apply Grievous Wounds to somebody, like maybe a Silas or like an Irelia, who really have a ton of healing. Speaking of healing, you do sometimes still need more healing than what the Resolve Tree can offer you, and 9 times out of 10, you're going to be going for the Inspiration Tree secondary. And if you do need more healing, you can choose to take Biscuits, but realistically, you're looking at four options here. Perfect timing for a stopwatch, which is really, really solid and can build into something like Stone Plate. Time Warp Tonic for movement speed and instant healing from health potions, which is a lot more valuable than you might think. Biscuits for extra sustain and mana. And Cosmic Insight for all around scalability. Time Warp Tonic is probably the rarest choice out of all of them, but it's still picked decently often. And you want to take it in matchups where movement speed really matters. Think of stuff like a Janna, or maybe an enemy Karma, where popping a Time Warp Tonic can get you some nice instant healing, which is really good, but then the movement speed allows you to outrun one of their abilities, like maybe getting hit by a Tornado, or a Karma Q, or even getting rooted by a Karma W. To finish out your runes with the minor runes, you're going to want to take Adaptive Force with Armor and MR. Thresh doesn't really need attack speed because, like we mentioned earlier, you don't want to be sitting there auto-attacking a lot. It's better to have the Adaptive Force, which can give you harder hits and harder hitting abilities overall. This leaves you with a really interesting choice for your first item though, so let's jump into the items now. If you do want to go attack speed because you're going to be hitting somebody more often because you're playing against like a shorter range support or maybe even a melee support, and you choose to take attack speed in your minor runes for that reason, then you can go steal shoulder guards. But if you're going Adaptive Force in your minor runes, you probably want to go a Relic Shield. That way you actually get ability power instead of attack damage. It might seem kind of weird, but remember, Thresh's ability power ratios are actually pretty good, and just a little bit can be the difference between winning or losing early on. Once you've chosen your starting item, then you're looking at your boots. Most of the time, if you're looking for map impact, you're going for Moby Boots, but Tabbies, Merc Treads, and Swifties are all options depending on what the enemy team offers. If you're looking at an Ash and you really, really just hate that slow, Swifty Boots are a good option. You could also go Tabbies for more damage reduction, so you could actually walk up to her, hook her, and maybe actually survive. Merc Treads, of course, provide tenacity and are really nice if you're trying to have the ability to stay alive and run away even after getting CC'd, by making sure that you're not sitting there for a year and a half under some stun or something. Now once you hit this breakpoint, like we said earlier, Thresh is a super versatile champion, and now all I can tell you is you gotta adapt. Thresh can use almost any support item. Mikael's? Yep. Locket? Definitely. Redemption? Oh yeah, Zeke's Herald. Whoa, hold on, that was too much of a throwback. Zeke's Convergence? Definitely. Knight's Vow? Oh yeah, keep your AD carry or whoever's important alive. Does the enemy team want to try and take those short fights where they can burst people out and melt through people? Oh, the Stone Plate's looking mighty juicy over there. 
there's just so many items that you could fit in on the first slot for Thresh, it's absolutely ridiculous. And even on any slot beyond that, do you want to just take one person and turn them into Thanos, buy Zeke's and Knight's Vow, and put it on your AD carry? That person is probably never going to die, but if they're still getting close, you could buy a locket to give them instant shielding, or a redemption for delayed healing. I mean, why not both at that point, right? Just about any combination could work. That's what I'm trying to get across here, and I hope you understand that, because Thresh is not a champion who wants to build the same items every game. You can buy Zeke's for damage on your engage. You can buy Righteous Glory to have a stronger engage. You can buy Knight's Vow to keep some particular person safe or Locket slash Redemption to help keep your team alive. Stone Plate turns you into a monster frontliner. Adaptive Helm is crucial against some rapid magic damage champions and the list goes on and on and hopefully you've learned a lot from the examples I set out. But that's just about everything you need to know in order to take Thresh and start smashing some games. And to find more guides like this one, but even more in-depth than this, make sure you go check out our website, GameLeap.com. We have tons of guides that are all done by Challenger level players on just about any topic you could ever need. We actually have even more guides on Thresh up there already. Not in the champion guide market? Totally understandable. You can get generic guides on lanes, guides on macro, or just guides on skills that you need to be good at League. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching the whole video. To the Thresh mains who have happened to come here, did you guys happen to learn anything? I, I really want to know. And do you have any tips of your own to share for the people who are coming here for the first time looking at Thresh? And anyways, as always, my name is Ace Windstorm, and I will see you all later.